The modern swine industry is concerned about nutrient excretions and gaseous emissions. And here at Oklahoma State, uh, Scott, you guys have been working on some feed rations and some feed ratios to kind of help with some of that. Explain mm -hmm. your research. Well, Clinton, our research is focused on what we can do as far as a diet or dietary changes that we can employ that can reduce nitrogen, phosphorus excretion from swine facilities, as well as possibly reducing gaseous emissions such as uh, ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, and some of the greenhouse gases as well. Yeah. And how are you guys going about doing that? Well, if we look at the diet, we could think of the diet as maybe the first line of defense against excretion and emissions because what we feed the pig will ultimately lead to excretion gaseous emissions and so forth. Uh, if we can improve the digestibility of the diet or, or how well the pig utilizes the nitrogen, phosphorus content of the diet, then we can maybe have a better understanding of dietary changes that can be employed to reduce those. What we've concentrated on is looking at the protein fraction of the diet which mm -hmm. contains nitrogen and the phosphorus content of the diet because those are the two nutrients that are most concerned when we think about land application right. of um, manure for um, fertilizer value and so forth. So we've looked at that and as far as we don't probably need to go into all the, the emphasis on greenhouse gases, we all know that, but ammonia emissions from facilities, hydrogen sulfide and some of the other emissions are becoming more and more um, of concern as we move forward. Sure. with the industry. So our research is really focused on what we can do from a dietary standpoint to influence or impact excretions and emissions. Right, and so by, I guess, going in and, and changing the ratios of proteins and, and that kind of thing, you guys are able to see a difference. Right, we can, from the protein standpoint, we can, we can go in to the diet and reduce the total protein content of the diet, which reduces total nitrogen in the diet. Uh, supplement that or replace that with specific amino acid additions that which are commercially available and by doing so we reduce the amount of nitrogen entering the pig and thus we can reduce the amount of nitrogen exiting or that the pig excretes and we've done that without affecting performance or carcass value of the pig so it's a it's a win-win situation as long as you know got to factor in cost to the amino acids that replacement sure. value but you can do that to not hurt performance and get a, we found upwards of a 40% reduction in nitrogen excretion. Hmm. And the other uh, elements, you've been able to reduce them as well? Well, phosphorus is another concern. Um, phosphorus for monogastrics, that would be poultry, swine, and so forth. Most of what we feed is excreted because uh, swine, like humans and poultry, lack the enzyme necessary to digest phosphorus and cereal grains and so forth. And, and today we have that enzyme available commercially as a feed additive. It's called phytase. If we include that in the diet, then that reduces excretion by 35-40% uh, from the pig, allows us to feed lower levels of dietary phosphorus in the diet, reduces excretion, doesn't uh, impact the pig as far as performance or carcass value at all. So it's uh, widely used by the industry. We're just trying to put a specific number yeah. value on the amount of excretion we can expect Great. Uh, for, for group house pigs. So, well, one, I guess, key thing is that you guys are using all commercially available grains yes. and feeds and right. additives. Additives, yeah. Okay. Yeah, all of those are commercially available. There are no secrets or anything. Yeah. Uh, producers can use those today to, again, not only reduce excretion, but to also uh, reduce the possibility of of emissions of those gases. All right, thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Interesting work.